Welcome to Wines and Wonders with Kirsten Fox. True stories with a side of wine. Looking for inspiration for your life and your wine glass? This is your podcast. Hello and welcome back to Wines and Wonders with a psalm and a shaman. It's Kirsten and Danielle coming to you again after a little break, and which has been very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're, we're launching into a whole new uh, talk today and it's going to be a nice show um, all wrapped up in a little package so that you can um, learn about what we're going to be talking about and then also have some tools to leave with to help yourself in your life and of course have a new wine tip to leave with as well for your drinking life that we hope doesn't affect your <laughs> personal life yes, yes. a whole bunch yeah. yes just <laughs> except for nice um, reasonable fun um, so we are going to be talking about repeating patterns today mm-hmm. in our lives. And I'd like to hear what, so Danielle, mm-hmm. tell me, I know what my repeating patterns, yeah. <laughs> I see them a lot, which is really not great when I see them, but please do talk to us about what repeating patterns are. Well, they're exactly what they sound like. They're repeating patterns. So we all have these particular patterns in our life where we start to see it again and again and again. And I'm not, we're, what we're not talking about today is the repeating pattern of the little stuff that shows up like, oh my God, that happened last week and now it's happening this week. Now, of course, that can be part of the larger repeating pattern. But what we're kind of diving into here today is looking at those larger repeating patterns, the ones that might span a longer time frame where it's like, wow, I went through this in my 20s and then it didn't show up for me for a while and now all of a sudden this thing is back and I'm going through it again and I thought that I did my personal work around it and I thought that I was done with this. How can this be happening? And then we address it in whatever way we do and then some time down the road we're like, I thought that I addressed this. (laughs) Why is this happening? (laughs) So those oh, repeating patterns, yes. yeah, oh. those are good ones. Right? They are, you, and that's yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. I keep thinking it's oh, finally I'm done with yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. And then it comes back. It comes back. It comes back. Yeah, oh, it does. That's repeating patterns. Uh, so, okay. what happens? There, there can be a few different things that go on, but I'm going to give you the shamanic perspective, knowing that these patterns are what I work with with my clients, Mm. right? And it's also the big piece we work with in the year-long medicine wheel training that I teach. Our very first class is all about these repeating patterns. Mm. And as a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to step into class one of this year's medicine wheel journey. Mm-hmm. So I've been mm-hmm. reviewing my notes. So this is Perfect. like, I know, timely. We, oh. we picked this topic a while ago and actually it's all lining yes. up. So these big repeating patterns actually stem from a belief system. They can stem from an event that happened that within that event, within that trauma, I'm going to call it, because it is trauma. Now, on the spectrum of trauma, we have what they refer to as big T trauma, like the large ones that we could probably all conjure up a few images of large trauma. And then they have small T trauma. And small T trauma is the trauma that happens over the course of time or an incident that may have happened that doesn't seem like it was a really big deal in the moment, Uh but what came out of it is a belief system. What came out of it sounds something like this. That sucked so bad. I'm going to make sure that never, ever happens again. Mm -hmm. Or, wow, that caught me by surprise. I had no idea that this was the outcome. Okay, so here we go. Here's an example. Caitlin was unaware she, um, was aware she shopped too much, overspent, and felt remorseful. Her remorse and debt led to a cycle of self-loathing, which she responded to by shredding her credit cards. Oh, God, this all sounds... Mm-hmm. Although this isn't my problem, I can relate. And she banned herself from shopping at the mall or online. Mm-hmm. These were short-lived eff- efforts to control the cycle. For reasons unclear to her, 
the impulse to shop would resurface in an intense, irresistible manner. Man manner. The, comp the compunction she inevitably felt later when she went was completely lost to her in the immediacy of these moments. Mm -hmm. So she is like, I don't care what it's gonna ha what's gonna happen to me after this. I just have to do it. Right. The mm -hmm. painful cycle continues, and then with a psychoanalyst, mm -hmm. she just went into her relationship with her mother, who apparently defined herself by her beauty. And when Caitlin would go shopping with her mother, she felt like her mother's doll mm. as she was being dressed and, um, and felt like she was important. Of course, then they go a little deeper and it turned out that actually her mother in these shopping trips lamented Caitlin's body shape and how the clothes wouldn't fit right mm. and how she never quite looked right in the mm -hmm. clothes. So here was the solution, which was shopping, which made her feel seen mm -hmm. and object, you know, like this, I'm a doll. My mother loves me. But then actually deep down inside, it made her feel awful about herself. Right. And so as soon as she was able then to, you know, focus on this, that's where the healing began. Right. So does that make, is that yeah, a good example? That's a belief okay. system. Right? It's a belief system. So right. in this example, Caitlin's belief system is I have value and self-worth when I'm shopping, but that isn't really what comes out of the shopping experience. What really comes out of the shopping experience is I have no value and yeah. no self-worth. So the pattern is, and it revolves around the same arena. This one is a really nice and tidy package because the behavior was the same from when she was a kid. It doesn't right. always look like okay. that. Okay? okay. But in this case, it exemplifies this beautifully. Okay. So, and it just so happens that it happened to look the same. But the deep belief system is I feel good when I go and do this thing. But then I feel really bad after I go and do this yes, thing. Right? Yes. And so her experience with her mom is, wow, I feel like my mom's really paying a lot of attention to me. But the underlying messaging in this event of shopping and being paid attention to is you're not okay. Yes. And so she creates this pattern of looking for the feel good which is the compulsion of go shopping. It makes me feel good immediately. But the back end of now I feel like crap about myself, it all ties into the same looping belief system. And so enter in the repeating pattern because the belief system says, I need to do something external to feel good about myself, which then is really going to make me feel bad about myself. We could kind of sum it up. We are such like messy messy humans mm -hmm. man I'm telling you yeah, it's complex in there I like I said I, I mean for my life I always come up against the women aren't as good as men because mm -hmm. this and and I mean it's been and I keep I've done the exact same thing over my the course of my life mm -hmm. that I keep thinking is and just like Caitlin I feel like I'm gonna cut my cards up mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do that anymore <laughs> I'm cutting up that that belief system mm -hmm. I own this now man mm -hmm. it does not and then I find myself falling right back into it and having to re-educate myself mm -hmm. because it is such a big belief that mm -hmm. I've grown up with in mm -hmm. that so mm -hmm. okay so yeah. and when you're seeing people does it follow, I mean, it might not, like you're saying, it might not be shopping now that the person's right. doing it, Correct. but, um, are you, are you able to find that in mm -hmm. a general way? Mm -hmm. Like you can, Yeah. how does that look? It looks like investigative work. Okay. So, and actually this is a tool for all you listeners out there. So the tool is that we need to create an objective perspective of our lives and so you know when somebody comes and sees me that's easier because I kind of know what I'm looking for and I know how to ask the questions and I know how to steer the conversation to get down to it mm -hmm. right I know that repeating patterns all have a belief system okay and so they I all that. do they all period do. period okay yep unequivocally unequivocally okay yep. all right your repeating pattern has a belief system that's why it's a repeating pattern Belief systems have to be tr proven true. They're a belief. When we believe something, and that is our, and we're bought in on this belief. Okay. Okay. Then it 
gets proven true so we can keep it as a belief. You mean we prove it yes, ourselves we true. Prove it ourselves we make true. sure whatever our lives yep. are doing yep. is proving it true. Correct. This is all unconscious, Kristen. Uh -huh. People don't wake up in the morning and say, well, I feel really bad about myself, <laughs> so I know that I'm going to shop so I can feel better, and then I'm going to feel bad right. so it can reinforce the fact that I believe I have no self-worth. Mm -hmm. We don't wake up and think it from a logical standpoint. So our belief systems are these deep underlying core beliefs that drive the behavioral patterning. Okay. So all these behavioral patterns have a belief system underneath them and we will prove them true. Now, when we've, you know, opened up the show and we were saying that, you know, maybe that thing happened in your twenties and you recognize like, wow, I have an issue around this. So you go to a therapist and you work on it and you feel like you've overcome it. But lo and behold, 10 years later, the whole thing is happening again, right? Yes. So we can have these repeating patterns because we can address it and understand it. We can recognize, oh, yeah, I, I do this thing where, you know, I eat ice cream because it makes me feel good, but then it really doesn't make me feel good and then just reinforces that I don't make good choices, right? Right, sure. Okay, so, so I'm going to stop eating ice cream. And so we can stop eating ice cream, mm -hmm. but because we have a belief system that says I'm not good enough and I don't make good choices, you're just going to transfer that belief system into a different repeating oh. pattern. Oh, yeah. It might not be ice cream. No. You move on to you peanut brittle. You move on to something correct. Okay. Yeah. All whatever right. it is. Okay. Or like getting into bad relationships mm. or not being able to budget your finances or whatever. Pick mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but what's going on in this pattern, if we looked at it, if we went from ice cream to peanut brittle to boyfriends mm -hmm. to money, mm -hmm. what's underneath it is a repeating pattern of I'm going to do this thing that it gives me instant gratification. It's filling a void and then it's going to make me feel bad. And then I'm going to know I shouldn't have been doing that because I have a dairy allergy. <laughs> okay. Right? Okay. Right. I mean, this is, I'm so I'm obviously blowing this right, up, right. but this is how it operates. It's like, if I know I have a dairy allergy, but I keep eating dairy ice cream, that that becomes my choice. And then it makes me feel bad. What I'm reinforcing is that I don't make good choices. Mm -hmm. That's the belief system. The pattern just plays itself out from ice cream to peanut brittle to boyfriends to money. So we start to look at the deeper underlying piece that's going on. And we can all do this. We can all sit down and get real with ourselves with a glass of wine that you will pair with the show. <laughs> of course. And it might become easier to get honest by the second glass. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, oh, boy. Or yeah. you're just asleep by yeah. then. So. <laughs> right. I've done that. You've I taken care so. of <laughs> your problem. So we... We look at it and we say, gosh, what are those things that keep showing up in my life? What are those patterns? You know, for me, one of them that I had for a long time was all, I'm a scrappy kind of can figure it out, take care of myself, support myself, earn my own money kind of gal. That's right. how I grew up. And so, um, my dad was super innovative in like, okay, I do this for a long time. And then when it doesn't work, I reinvent and I do this for a long time. And he's good at that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He had success with that model. So I grew up watching like, oh yeah, you just kind of like figure it out, right? Like street smart. We're just right. going to scrap our way through this thing. So I came up and out of that childhood and realized like I can always take care of myself. Like I can be scrappy. I can sure. be innovative. This doesn't sound bad to me at all. Right. But underneath was you always make it work. So you have just enough to get by. Oh yeah. So I was scrappy and I was innovative, but it was always just enough, just enough. I can kind of $20 pay left my bills. in the bank at the yeah, end of the month. Yeah. I know I can be two weeks late over here. So I'll pay this that, one over um, here and then I'll juggle mm -hmm. all those grace periods, right? Mm -hmm. And sure. <laughs> all right. So I, I did that for a long time. But man, the undercurrent of stress 
and management in that was I became used to it, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And once I finally s- stopped and said, this is insanity, <laughs> what is going on? And I began to look at the pattern of, okay, I can figure it out and have enough here. And then if that stops working or is I want to switch careers or I'm moving, so I need to get a job somewhere else or whatever, you know, that was the thing. It was always just enough, always just enough, just enough in this job. Maybe when I get the next job, then I'll have more, just enough in this job, next job, maybe I'll have more. Right. And so I started to look at that pattern and what was underneath it was I'm not good enough to get over the hump. I'm good enough for just enough. Oh, yeah. So I always had just enough. Now I never starved and I never really went without what we need for our basic needs and survival. But I never had a savings Mm -hmm. until I started to really address that piece and look at like, wow, this is how it shows up. So I've got this belief system. And the way I know that I have a belief system is because I can see the symptoms of it. The your the way your pattern actually plays out is the symptom of the belief system. Are okay. So are belief systems are those kind of universal? Are there is there, there some kind of are there? there because I'm just I'm wondering. I'm hearing you thinking I'm not enough to do this, and I'm thinking I'm not enough because the men are supposed to take care of us. Yeah. Whatever. All these yeah, yeah. different things, and um, it sounds similar. Mm-hmm. And and really in the, the sense of our Caitlin yeah. shopper. Yeah. That's, I'm not enough. Mm-hmm. My mom's, I'm not enough. My mom doesn't love me because I need, I'm mm-hmm. not, my body doesn't look right or whatever. So our, should we take a break and then will you, do you want to yeah. come back and talk about what um, I'll call archetypal belief oh, systems perfect. And, then all, and then very personal. Belief perfect. Systems, yeah. uh, okay. Let's do that. All right. Yeah. See you in a second, you guys. Today's podcast is brought to you by my company, Uplift Gift, when words aren't enough. When I had cancer, friends sent me the most amazing, wonderful gifts and cards, and they were from their hearts, and they made me feel so comforted and loved. And at the time, I was writing a column for the Huffington Post on wine pairings called Wines to Pair with Life, and so I wrote a series of articles about wines to pair with breast cancer. So in my public uh, eye, in the public you know, purview, people started contacting me saying, what should I send my friends? What were the best gifts when someone gets bad news? And finally, I just heard, you know, this message that said, this is, this is what you need to do, Kirsten. This is, this is your gift out of your cancer that you can give the rest of the world. So the, the company, again, is Uplift Gift, and we help you support your friends and loved ones who may be far away from you, who just are getting a divorce or are dealing with a parent dying or are struggling with a new diagnosis. I realized people need help talking to others who've been given bad news. Since I've been through that experience quite a few times in my life, I feel like the Uplift Gift a uh, series of gift boxes are a perfect fit to help you support your friends. Uplift gift when words aren't enough. Welcome back to Wines and Wonders, inspiration for your life and your wine glass. All right, welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. All right, we're about to hear about some archetypal mm-hmm. uh, belief systems, which yeah. does seem to really resonate with me. So mm-hmm. what's, what, tell me about so, these. So what I've seen over the course of the years that I've been working with clients, 15 years of being in classes, working with clients, is that we, as humans, and now I, I can't answer the question why, I haven't gone deep enough to say, okay, I keep seeing this over and over and over. Why is this a human condition? I have my, my thoughts and my theories around it, but I don't have a, you know, published paper in the psychology (laughs) magazine of whatever, whatever around it. But, um, I absolutely see not good enough. 
Mm -hmm. as a core belief. When we distill down the individual behavior of something, we get down to, I'm not good enough. I would think that's I almost... I can't tell you how gosh. many times I've seen that. I see it. I actually, as a matter of fact, I could make a blanket statement right here, right now and say, I've seen it in every single client I've ever worked on. Mm -hmm. Some version. Some version. Some version. What other ways would you describe that feeling of not good enough? Are there other ways that people talk about not lovable? Is that another not way? Not lovable. Okay. Um, I can't trust myself. Uh -huh. Not smart enough, uh -huh. not the right whatever, not the right sex in your case. Yeah, right. right? Um, not in the mm. right family, not married to the right person, not in the right station of life, not in the right um, mm. financial bracket of the world, not in the right country for God's sakes. <laughs> I mean, anything that we can say, I'm not blah, blah, blah. We can begin to distill it down to, and what's underneath that, and what's underneath that, and what's underneath that, and what's underneath that, mm -hmm. and we get down to, I'm not good enough. Or another version down, I call this at the bottom of the bucket, because okay. if we imagine that we've got this five-gallon bucket, right, we will have a variation of that core, 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 core archetypal belief system will have variations of it. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has a, I'm not smart enough, particularly if you're a genius. Uh -huh. right? Not uh -huh. everybody has a, I'm the wrong sex. If you're like, you know, I'm a woman and I'm here to kick ass and I don't care. Like that's not everybody's mm -hmm. thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. we, we recognize that it will play out in a personalized way in a person's life. But when we get down to the bottom of the bucket, there's some version of I'm not good enough. I don't belong here, meaning as a human, meaning I don't have the right to exist on the planet. Mm -hmm. And I am not worthy of love and acceptance. Those are the core big ones that we can distill most things down mm -hmm. to. Now, we might have to make our way through that bucket before we get right down to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can get right down to it. We can just, you know, the person's open and ready enough and whatever it is, and we go right into like, wow, what's really going on here? And they'll say it oftentimes. They'll say, you know, I just don't feel lovable or I don't feel mm -hmm. good enough. I'm not good enough to be here. That's what it will translate to. Now, they may have come in and we started working with why they're on their 10th job and they still have an asshole of a boss. That's a repeating pattern, ah, by the way. Right. 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 And why do you keep actually attracting the job where you have an asshole of a boss? Well, because somewhere there's a belief system that says you don't deserve to be treated with respect and whatever it might mm -hmm. come down to, right? Whatever version of assholery we're working with. <laughs> so then you're sitting there in the job interview and the kind of treats you with a little disrespect and that you're like, this is the perfect job for me. I'm, I recognize the next recognize step for me. This is, this is my perfect dream job. Sweet. Yeah. Because I'm going to come out of it six months from now and say, I told you. Oh, it's just reinforcing all those yes, beliefs. I told you. Yeah. So what you're I saying, knew this oh, would happen. so the, I told you, I knew this would happen. This always happens to me. Oh, that was that. Then, you know, you know, that's part of your yes. repeating. Belief. If ah. that is flying out of your mouth, mm -hmm. you are recognizing that this is a much larger pattern. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. If it's like, this always happens. This I told you this happens. I can't help it. It's just how it is. It's never going to change, mm. right? If we hear ourselves saying these kinds of things, that's the red flag to go, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Because the beauty of addressing things, Kirsten, at their core and addressing the energetics behind it is that it can shift and it can change. I was just going to ask you, okay, let's say you're there. Let's yeah. say you, you, I mean, let's say you say it like I knew this was going to happen or I told you so, mm -hmm. or in this case, I told myself so, whatever. Yeah. 
okay, there I am. I'm, I'm that adult. I don't have you, you yeah, know, I don't right. have a shaman on my, you know, <laughs> speed dial. Mm-hmm. And there I am. I've recognized it. Mm-hmm. What is the best step for me then to go, okay, I've recognized, here it is. Yeah. How do I backtrack myself? Yeah. Okay, here's my favorite simple exercise. Oh, I love it. I'm okay. getting shivers. The, the best simple exercise is to have that moment where we recognize it, write out those things that are going on. I always get a job with a boss who disrespects me and isn't nice and can't see my value. And, and as a matter of fact, it's not just my boss, but it's also my father-in-law and da 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 right? We start to look like, okay, if this is happening in my workplace and this is how I feel about it, next step is where else does this happen? It might, remember, it might look different. It might be a different flavor of ice cream, but it's still ice cream. <laughs> okay? Okay. So where else does this happen? We'll come up with like two, three, four main events. You're probably not going to have 52 events. You could. You could get through it and be like, oh my God, this happens everywhere. But, you know, you want to highlight the big ones. Okay. And then the next step is what must I believe to be true about me that makes these things keep happening? Okay, what must I believe to be true? It allows for this pattern to continue to happen. That's the key. That's the question. Because when you look at it and we can distill it down, what does this say about me? Essentially, that's that, you know, we could sum it up in uh-huh. that kind of phrasing. What does this say about me? And you're going to get to something. You're going to get in this example of you always end up being demeaned and not respected, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to get to something. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Women are worse than men or Mm. men are better than men, whatever Mm -hmm. it's going to be. I don't deserve respect. I don't deserve to be here. I'm not pretty enough. Whatever. uh, You're going to come up with something. Okay. You're going to look at all these different events that you just outlined and you're going to be like, oh my God, I could say the same thing about myself in every single one of these things. Now that's your belief system. Okay. Okay. So now we get to the belief system. Yeah. We'll, we'll put these little steps in the notes for you guys so that you can have them handy. Okay, so so now we have the belief system. We're just going to roll with I'm not good enough. Okay. I'm not good enough. Okay, now what do we do about that? We can then ask ourselves, what have I actually learned from holding this belief system. What thing have I cultivated or learned from not good enough? Now okay. I'm gonna give you an example yeah. okay. of that. Okay. okay. Because this is like a this this makes everybody's brain melt. Because <laughs> the, the immediate knee-jerk reaction to that question is nothing. I hate that belief system. No good <laughs> ever comes from it. <laughs> So why are you even asking me that right. question? There can't possibly be a benefit. Okay. The answer to the quiz is yes, there is. There is. So Dang just it. trust me. Okay. Okay. So for instance, with me, not good enough. If I wasn't good enough, what did I try to do? Kirsten, what do you think I might have tried to do if I believed I wasn't good enough? Well, you'd continue to re reinvestigate a new this and you'd move a lot. You'd have all these mm-hmm. different um, jobs. You'd have mm-hmm. all these different projects that mm-hmm. were always half finished, but not enough. <laughs> Am I describing you? <laughs> I don't even know that. about yeah. Danielle, but, okay. <laughs> Well, definitely the half finished projects, uh-huh. but I don't know if that came directly. Okay. Probably, it probably actually <laughs> did tie into it because then I would feel bad that I couldn't complete anything. Mm-hmm. So you're right. Oh, you are right about that. Kirsten. <laughs> but what it did is it propelled me. It drove me to try to become better. Oh, I see. The tr- the tr- the okay. It propelled me to become better. If I thought yes, I wasn't good did. enough, I was going to try to be better. So I was a perpetual student for a long time. I mm-hmm. studied all kinds of things. I read all kinds of books. I came into deep, deep study of knowing whatever topic I was studying 
because what was driving that was I, I don't feel like I'm good enough, so I have to really excel here. Okay, so what the benefit or what I learned from having this belief system is that I actually know how to persevere in something and learn it and learn it well. So I guess I'm okay. Uh, uh, okay, so when you're saying that someone has a, they gotten to their belief, mm -hmm. I'm not worth, I'm not good enough. Yeah, there we are. I'm not good enough. You're not asking us to try to find um, good things that that I'm trying to figure out a different way to approach this because it it makes me feel really uncomfortable to to look at that like you're saying you said to me well that we don't why would you want to look at that everything sucks mm -hmm. about it but as we're trying to take in. Um, we've learned what the belief is as we've tried to take in what's good about it. What I'm hearing you say is that the, the, um, the good that has come out of our bad repeating pattern is actually going to help us move forward. Yeah. I, I will you please give us another yeah, example yeah. because okay. this is so mind blowing. If I can look at what I've cultivated and grown from this belief system and I can say, okay, well, I know actually how to persevere in something. I know that I can rely on myself. Okay. I know okay. that I can take care of myself. I know that I can always have work that pays me enough to keep a roof over my head, food on the table keep me clothed, keep my electric and heat bill turned on mm -hmm. and keep my son safe and warm and dry. All right. Okay. Okay. Because I was driven to make sure that I cultivated that skill set based on your belief that yeah. you weren't. Now remember, that. this is not overt. No, remember, right, right, right. We're right. not doing this actively. This right. Is all this is all subconscious. Okay. So I can start to look at it and go, well, I know I can take care of myself. I know I can always make sure there's food on the table, no matter what's going on. I know that I can become proficient in a topic that's of interest to me. I know that I can um, try new things. I know that I mm -hmm. can move in and out of different jobs or states or um, scenarios that I'm in to move towards what's the next thing. And when I can really look at that and say, wow, I have cultivated this ability to do this. And we can really see that about ourselves. This is, this is where this is where it is this place of like, you have to want to do this process when we get down to the limiting beliefs because you have to be willing to say I can own that about myself I can name that I can say you know what I'm really good at I'm really good at survival I know I can take care of myself and once we do that what happens Kirsten here's the how does it work what happens is when we can this is how we talk about it in class when we can see the gift of the thing that has transpired and we can integrate and take in that gift and mm. claim it for our own, what it allows us to do is shift the pattern that helped us to grow that gift in the first place. So we no longer have to keep this pattern or this belief system of not good enough for me to be a perpetual student. I don't have to not, I don't need a belief system that says I'm not good enough to go take a course in something. Ah. So now I can go be a perpetual student because I want to, not ah. because I'm trying to prove that I'm good enough. I can move out of one career track or job into a different one because it lights me up and it's the thing that I want to do, not because I'm trying to prove something or work with this belief system of not good enough. So the way we get there is to look at the things that we have grown and cultivated and learned through this pattern. I'm going to call the belief system a pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay. So through this pattern and when we can see like, yeah, 
I have figured that Mm -hmm. out. I have grown that. Then we no longer need that vehicle Mm. to help us get there. We can own it for ourselves and we can say, I know that I'm always going to be okay. I know that I know how to work and I know how to earn. I'm going to be okay. So I can shift out of this place and I don't need this anymore to transport me in my life's journey of Mm -hmm. getting somewhere. Okay. So I'm seeing it when you're describing it. I'm okay. So I, I always picture the bucket that you're describing is like this. I I would call it up like a black hole. It's just like filled with just (laughs) tar. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the top, it's kind of like muck that, you know, like spring mud. Yeah. But then at the bottom, it's just like full on (laughs) black tar. And what I'm picturing you doing or saying as you, as you're describing it is like, taking your hand and just reaching it through those layers and layers of all the stories and all that black muck into the tar at the bottom. And then like feeling around and finding, you know, a diamond down there and grabbing it and Mm -hmm. pulling it back up through all the muck. And then looking at that diamond and saying this, the muck, the, all that stuff in that black hole it's created this beautiful diamond. And so you start appreciating those, whether it's emeralds and rubies Mm -hmm. that I see in the bottom, you can, you can actually pull them out and appreciate them for what they are rather than having to go through the muck all the time. Because now you've got them like up in some kind of like a mobile above your window. Exactly. You pulled it out of the bucket. Okay. You pulled it out of the bucket. We call this the jewels or the nuggets. Mm -hmm. Right In class, when I teach this, we talk about looking for the jewel. Mm, We do? Yeah. Oh, that might have gone in subconsciously because I was definitely seeing jewels. Uh Thank you. What's the jewel (laughs) out of this belief system? Mm -hmm. What's the jewel from this pattern? And... And when we really can take that jewel, now imagine, I'm going to I'm gonna roll with this and okay. give like another imaginary scenario. So that one's a little more tangible, like, yeah, I can reach through a bucket, find a diamond, pull it out, clean it off, look right. at it, right? So now from an energetic standpoint, imagine we could take that diamond and we could bring it into our body somewhere, wherever, right? Maybe it's our stomach if we don't feel okay. good about ourselves, right? And we could take it into our stomach and our our beingness would absorb that diamond and it would come in and it would begin to inform every cell in your body and you would become that gift. You become that jewel, Mm. that quality of that jewel. And you're like, I am that jewel. I don't even need this bucket of tar. Uh That's energetically what happens when we do this process. Wow, this is so cool. Um, and technically, I mean, it's pro- it's probably harder and it takes longer, but you can do it yourself. You can, um, you can take yourself through it if you really, I mean, because I don't know, you've got to have huge focus because especially when you're feeling like crap about yourself, you know, like I told you so, mm-hmm. I knew this would happen. Mm-hmm. It's like to walk, to 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 listen to that, crappy voice in your head and try to start sitting down and dealing with it and saying, you know, what has caused this? What are all those, the Mm -hmm. list of the asshole boss, Mm -hmm. blah, blah, Mm -hmm. blah. And then moving into where else do I see this? Mm -hmm. And yes, let's put up a a point by point kind of Mm -hmm. map that you guys can go to the, go to winesandwonders.com and you can download the um, show. Well, you'll at least be able to copy and paste. I'm not sure I've got download up, um, going yet on that site or also, um, we can on just our, list it. Yeah. Maybe, we'll just right? list it in yeah. the notes, in the show notes. Um, but that's what we can do if we really can, if we really want to get us ourselves yeah. past yeah. that. And I mean, we all know people who just continue, you see it yeah. easily in other people, right? Way easier. Right. And you just see people throwing more tar mm-hmm. and more black stuff mm-hmm. into their whole bat bucket. And you just hear it and you see it and you see it and you're like, why don't they see? Mm-hmm. But I guess it's just our own blindness from right. our own selves. Now, when I moved through it and I've shifted that, you know, I, I'm i happy to say that I'm no longer living in a scrappy make do. I know at least I can take care of myself kind of repeating pattern. Yeah. 
you know, I'm not, You've I am that. not there anymore. You've definitely yeah. proven that because I've watched your business just mm-hmm. grow and mm-hmm. you step into a, a new world of finance that, um, obviously when we first met, you didn't mm-hmm. have that world at all. Right. So, you know, everything can shift when we get down to it. Now I would say to our listeners, if you're going to get down to the core, core, core stuff, yeah, maybe you want a little bit of assistance uh-huh. with that. If you, you know, because sometimes it's harder, it will bring up a few other things as we move through it of like, whoa, that's really what's going on. And it's nice to have a, a different perspective, a third party, or a third party yeah. to kind of assist with that. But I would say we all have what I'm going to call lighter fare repeating patterns. <laughs> and we can look at them and we can say, what? why do I keep doing that? What it, what is going on in there? What is that in there for me? And we can same process. What is the repeating pattern? Write it down. Where else do you do that? Now, what does that say about you? Mm-hmm. The fact that that thing keeps showing up. What does it say about you? And it will say something. Prom, I promise. And then that you can say, okay. So from this place of what this says about me, what have I actually cultivated? What have I learned or grown? How has it benefited me? It sounds like an oxymoron. I know this, everybody. I know. I know. But it, it's in there. And Kirsten, for as much as it's an oxymoron, you've gone through the process. Like you have stepped in and realized like, oh, wow, yeah, there, there, is, a, there is a payoff in there. Which is, it was, a, I, that was one of the most powerful exercises I remember going through yeah. during Medicine Wheel um, was... What are the gifts that yeah. I'd gotten out of this behavior of mine? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, but I guess, I guess until you, I mean, I guess we are human and it's, if you haven't fully stepped in or if you haven't fully done something, you're going to be repeating it. Mm-hmm. So I guess I'm always surprised because I went through the medicine wheel with Danielle Bryan, man. I thought it was all going to be over and I was just going to be stepping into this bliss world on the other side. Um, but I you guess, mean you haven't? <laughs> is that what's supposed to happen? Um, so I know I still have work to do as I um, continue along on this path, but yeah, we this is do. new to me. Yeah. And, and yeah. And so... It's I no guarantee. It. It's like what we say is like, you can, a lot it will change in your life when you go through any program, not just medicine wheel, uh-huh. but when you dedicate like, oh, I'm going to spend this whole year and explore myself and bring transformation to things, no matter whose program you're mm-hmm. going to, there's going to be shifts and changes that take place at the end of it. And there's, you know, that's not the guarantee that life doesn't keep happening, Mm -hmm. that we don't keep moving through those challenges or those thresholds or getting to know ourselves at deeper and deeper levels where we're like, oh, wow, okay, Mm. (laughs) here's another piece. And, and, And this is what we talk about is, well, when we come to that place, can we begin to recognize it as simply a threshold in our transformation process instead of like, I can't believe this is happening again. I must suck and I must have done it wrong and that didn't work. Like let's, can we just let that record go by the wayside? And can we begin to look at our life and know I am on an evolutionary soul's journey, which means that I will continue to evolve and grow. And through that growth, there's going to be things that I come up against, those thresholds where I'm going to have to move through it. Now, what I will say as a caveat to that statement is we don't want to adopt a belief system of I only grow through hard times and challenges. Oh, okay. They have to be hard. They, they have, have to be hard to have awful. any value, right? Got like it. The right. more you work, the more you put in, the more you get. Right. No pain, no gain, right. all that stuff, right? That we don't want to slip into a a new belief system that says that it has to be really hard and really painful and really challenging for there to be any kind of evolutionary growth. So I just want to name that right up front because I've seen so Mm. much of that. That's another core belief system. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. Right. I've seen so much of that, that, you know, I am, I used to operate that way. I grew up on the East Coast. If it doesn't hurt, you're not doing it right. I mean, there's a whole collective belief system that belongs to an entire region. And so, um, 
<laughs> so I have also moved through that one where <laughs> it's like I can continue to grow and learn and evolve and it doesn't have to be through really hard, trying, traumatic events. And but but I moved through that place. But yes, as humans on the planet, we're going to hit our growth edge and learn something and move through it. So, you know, can we begin to recognize that that's, those are the parts and the pieces. Now, I also will absolutely name that there are many people walking on the planet who have gone through really, really hard, challenging, trying times that is hard for people to even wrap their heads around, right? We Mm -hmm. hear stories that are just harrowing. So, um, I'm not making light. I'm not saying that like, oh, just write down your three things and look at the belief system and get the gift and move on. Like there are events and there are things that people move through where it does require assistance and help and time and to recognize that there are other layers of healing that need to happen before we just drop right down there. So I see. That is, yeah. I, that makes you know, sense. I've seen it. Um, and you're right. We wouldn't want to make light of any of that. That's not what we're talking about. But what I do hear you saying in terms of the constant work we have to do with ourselves is that if we can get away from the bucket of black muck and and then just only the next time maybe have just a little like a little beach pail yeah, of, right. Of black stuff. Yeah. And and so then we go, okay, this, oh, oh, I recognize it, but I just found the diamond uh-huh. and it wasn't as hard to get it mm-hmm. at the bottom. And so then we, we've we learned a little bit more. And so what I'm hearing you say is if we can learn from these mistakes, each time it may um, be a... Um, a more expedited. It yes. might not be as it might not be simpler or mm-hmm. easier. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be an expedited process right. to find those hidden mm-hmm. gems and mm-hmm. jewels at the you know in whatever size bucket or carrier we're ca- you know. Yeah. I'd like we to get, get to a down thimble. to shot glass. Yeah. Oh okay. no, a thimble. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a shot like glass. Either yeah. way, it's right. appropriate. <laughs> Um, but so that's got, you've got hope then yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, because nice. we start to recognize that we've been there and we uh-huh. can see it and we know that there's a jewel yes. in there. We do. We know there's a jewel. Yes. And if we take the time to look at it, then we can discard the bucket. We can shift into a different level of engagement with ourselves, which in turn becomes a different level of engagement with the world. And so hmm. we can start to come to see it as as simply that, that yeah. it's like, oh, there's a bucket there of muck is. and there's a jewel in there. I know there is. Yeah. 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 And I don't have to get all worked up about it. Again, it's can we reframe the way we start to look at it and get out of that rut that says, this is always what's going to happen to me. I, I'm sorry, just clarify, what is a spectrum and we're on the 1 to 50, not the 50 to 100? Can you just give me that? I don't understand in, what you're in, talking about. In trauma or oh. in how, how intense the thing is that you're working with. Oh. So on a spectrum of 1 being like really easy stuff for you to move through, you could write a list all day long, look at the jewel, get through it, okay. you can move on. You know, oh, okay. being like, wow, I hope we have a team of people who can assist who can this help person. me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Yes. We're at the one to 50 Yeah. and where there's not, if, we're, if you feel like you've gone to 51 or 52, we've got wine for that. Right? We do. Okay. We have wine for that. That's right. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, or you uh, can look what? up in your local directory, like, you know, shaman oh, near yeah. me. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's a good Google search. Shaman right. near me. Um, <laughs> it's what we're working towards. Kirsten. Thank you. Yeah. Danielle, do you um are you ready to talk about wine soon? Ready here? to talk about wine. All right, let's take a break and we'll be right back and talk about a wine to pair with repeating patterns. Mm-hmm. Thank you to Uplift Gift, our sponsor today. Uplift Gift is a gift box company that you can use to send beautiful, comforting items to your friends around the country who may be going through challenging times. These days when it is hard, harder to get out and 
grab a bunch of beautiful things from around different stores in your area and then box them up and get them to the post office. Uplift Gift is there for you to select lovely items, including caramels and beautiful organic teas and a pashmina that you can send to your friends around the country if they need some uplifting. So thank you again to Uplift Gift for sponsoring the show today. Now, what wine will Kirsten choose for your table tonight? Here she is. All right, welcome back, guys, uh, for the wine pairing to repeating patterns. Woohoo! Woo-hoo. So thank you for that, Danielle. That was such a great... Um, it's always good to reinvestigate this yeah. kind of thing. What I want to say is yeah. that it doesn't, it's not as daunting as it sounds, really. Okay, yeah. Well, my, I will tell you that after the medicine wheel, I, just my own personal experience, my bucket did get less big. And it's a smaller bucket that I'm carrying around, yeah. which is nice. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Portable. Yeah, portable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't carry the five pound no. Home Depot yeah, bucket. Yeah, I had to leave that one. Yeah. Side. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's true. It's portable now. Um, okay. I'm going to start by just starting with a story of Kim and her visit to the liquor store. All right. Kim loves wine. Um, She is a um, Chardonnay drinker, and she just loves it. But she's heard of other types of wines, and she's curious. And so she's decided, you know what, she is going to go in today to the liquor store, and she is going to buy a bottle of something other than her go-to wine. So she goes in the liquor store, and she starts in the Spanish wine section. And she is looking at the wines and, um, and starts to read the labels and and then she's like well maybe it'll be better in the Italian section and then she goes to the Italian section and starts looking at the white wines over there and she has no idea what they mean and they're the names of the bottles are all over the place and so um about after about 10 minutes of complete and utter confusion she walks of course back into the Chardonnay section and grabs her typical bottle whatever one she wants that day and checks out and gets out of the store and is, in this case, disappointed as always in herself because she keeps trying to break out of the Chardonnay all the time, her two favorite, three favorite Chardonnays. And so... What does that say about her? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, let's analyze that, Danielle. (laughs) Let's say, okay, you know what? It sucks to feel intimidated when you walk into a liquor store and you don't know anything about the other wines, right? And it is it is truly, um, it literally puts you into your black hole of I'm I'm not smart enough, whatever else, what other than black, I'm not lovable because I can't find a damn Italian wine that's going to substitute for my Chardonnay. But it is exactly true. It sucks and you do it again and again. So here is, I am going to help you break this repeating. Yes. <laughs> Two tools in this show. <laughs> and we're going to have the tools, both of these tools listed in our show notes. Okay. How do you break yourself out? How, this is, it's this simple. Now it does take a small amount of work. You do a five minute assessment on Google. Okay. I want you to type into Google. Chardonnay, characteristics of Chardonnay. This is what Kim's going to do. She's going to type in the characteristic, the characteristics of Chardonnay. And this is what I did for Kim. She's been one of my patients. I've been seeing her. <laughs> All right. I wrote, literally typed in the characteristics of Chardonnay. This is what I got back. Chardonnay can taste different depending on where it grows and how it's made. But typically, Chardonnay is a dry, medium to full-bodied wine with moderate acidity and alcohol. Its flavors range from apple and lemon to papaya and pineapple, and it also shows notes of vanilla when it's aged with oak. All right. You now have a completely different perspective on what that bottle means to you. Because we know you like Chardonnay, right? Mm -hmm. Kim loves Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. So then you say to yourself, let's search for, quote, similar wines to Chardonnay. 
when I searched for similar wines to Chardonnay, this is what I came up with. And by the way, this is this is not even in the three minute range now. It says, if you like Chardonnay, try these. Viognier, Chenin Blanc, and Fiano de, de Aviano. Excuse me, just a second, it's Italian. Fiano di Avilino, Avilino. I think they, I always try to Spanish, make everything Spanish. Avilino, I think they say their L's. So, and then it goes on to say, most people drink the wine they like, yes, but they also tend to stick with the wines they know. That's why such old familiars, such as Cabernet, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Sauvignon Blanc endure as top sales leaders when there are so many other wines. So, all you've done is ask for what are the characteristics of the wine you like, characteristics of Pinot Noir, characteristics of Cabernet. Get what that is in your head and then surf for alternatives to Cabernet or alternatives or similar wines too. And then what you start, and then that, now you've got a shopping list. Now, in this case, for our Kim, um, Viognier, Chenin Blanc, and Fiano di Avilino, she's going to know where to go. She's going to go look for the Chenin Blanc label. She's mm -hmm. going to go look for the Viognier label. She's going to look for these, and she's going to go to the Italian section, or she can take the list and show it without speaking to a, a store employee and say, I'm looking for one of these. And so then she goes out of that store and she takes that one bottle home and tastes it and learns more about herself. And then if she says, you know what, I didn't like that Viognier, she can go characteristics of Viognier and start comparing. Oh, I see Viognier, and I will tell you this, Viognier is a very full-bodied wine like Chardonnay. It's often oaked like Chardonnay, so it'll have vanilla character, but... Viognier has a, a floral, uh, it, it is so floral that it almost smells to me like someone has taken potpourri, <laughs> you know, in the little ball that you have in your sock drawer or whatever, yeah. the potpourri ball, and they've stuck it into the vat of Chardonnay, and it's just sitting there, just, just sopping up all of that floral stuff. And you know what? I'm not a big floral in my wine lover, personally. It's just what it is. But so some people, it's I call her like the opera singer in the, she's the fat lady that sings at the end, man. Mm -hmm. Viognier is like too much perfume, too much volume, too much everything <laughs> to me. But you may love it. But you know what? You're not going to break out of just, when you just walk into a store, it's like, it's like someone saying, I'm to get it back to the point of the um, repeating patterns, it's like someone saying this always happens. Mm -hmm. All you know, I can't believe it happened again. You know, all those different things we say to ourselves, it's like walking out with your Chardonnay every time. Mm -hmm. You have to just do a little ditch of work to find those characteristics so you can find yourself some an alternative to try. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't spend a lot of money on that first bottle right. that you're trying. And so you go experiment. I will put up in our show notes, I'll put up typical good alternatives, like in this case for Chardonnay, Viognier's number. I go there almost first with almost anybody who loves Chardonnay because it's such a similar bodied wine. Um, I don't think I've ever even had and tasted uh, the, um, what is it? Fiano di Avellino. No, I don't think I've ever tasted that. Wow. But well, so All I can right. I've got yeah. it for the store. <laughs> so that is our breaking repeated repeating patterns mm -hmm. for your your trip to the liquor store. And I'll have some suggestions up online, but also just typing in, learning a little bit more about what you like, and then typing in alternatives to mm -hmm. that wine mm -hmm. will get you to a whole new place. I love it. There's only two steps. Well, three if you include actually going the to shopping. the liquor store. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's that's two steps. Awesome. Two yeah. steps. We have, gosh, if we have not changed your life today, I'm not sure if, <laughs> if your life can be changed. <laughs> uh, love you guys. Thank you for tuning in again. Want to wrap it up? I would say... Um, Go find yourself a new bottle of wine and pull that diamond mm. out of the muck. Amen. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in another episode of Wines and Wonders with a psalm and a shaman. 
We look forward to sharing a new story and wine with you next time. Thanks for tuning in to Wines and Wonders.